He was getting input. None of the five official JIR committee members who were there objected to his participation for plus an hour. Uh, and he was even given an assignment by uh, the JIR committee in order to go ahead and do this. Now, I'm very privileged to live in Carlisle, but I think rules and procedures are in place to protect the democratic process within Carlisle. And at this meeting, they were all bypassed, and I'm concerned. And so what I'm asking is that the Board of Selectmen advise the DEER Committee on the proper procedures and rules. I want to thank you for your input. Thank you. I allow me this input. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else uh, for public input? There's a hand raised, Kate. Susan. I think it's uh, Susan Emmons. Susan Emmons. Just a minute. We have to unmute you or you have to unmute yourself. There you go. I have a question about the poll that was on the agenda. You said Eversource was going to be postponed. But can you tell us, uh, was that a notice because um, we're on the committee from the church? And we wanted to know exactly where the poll was going to go. All right. Um, it will be postponed to July 28th at 7.30. Mm -hmm. Do you know the placement of the poll? I believe it's by the entrance. It used to be by the exit, and I think now it's, they're thinking about putting it by the entrance. But um, that's why we're having a hearing. We'll, we'll know more about it when we get to okay. that. The, you think it's on the school side, not on the church and parsonage side? That was uh, That... I can't answer. Okay. Maybe Kim could. We, we have the diagram that Eversource submitted. Happy to share that if that sheds any light on that. Thank you. So the plan that they submitted along with their, their application. We can send that out. I'm going to try my video again and see if my sound stays, stays up. Uh, did you have any other questions, Susan? No, that's it. No? Thank okay, thanks. Uh, anybody else for public input? Christina. Okay. Christina. Oh, uh, Christina C. Yeah. Could somebody Hi. unmute? Christina, did you want to? She's, she's good. I think, I think I'm good. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hi, thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to bring up some points that concern me, and there's a little bit of overlap with what Jeannie has mentioned. Um, in the rush to push the hunt through, procedures and protocols are not always strictly adhered to. Some recent examples. At the June 9th BOS meeting, there was mention that the DCC did not have all seats filled and therefore could not vote. Yet at the last DCC meeting, a number of votes were taken. Now, I'm not sure what the quorum is for seven members, but regardless, the statements and the actions contradict each other. Further, at the last DCC meeting, Mr. Keel participated in discussions and strategy throughout the meeting as though he was already a member of the committee as well as the DEER agent. He is neither yet, and he has not been vetted by the BOS. It is clear that there is a push to have Mr. Keel be the DEER agent, as was evident by the attempt to place him in that position on the June 9th meeting without being vetted by the BOS or allowing others to apply. Further evidence of the predetermined decision as to who will be DEER agent is the fact that the only DCC vacant position advertised was for the member at large position and not for the DEER agent. I would like to state that I am not in opposition to Mr. Keel. I am objecting to the failure of observing proper procedures. It is also very clear that some people in positions of, uh, to influence the outcome wish to push through the hunt, no matter how this is achieved and regardless of the cost. The ill-prepared motion for the 2020 hunt presented on June 9th is a prime example. The push continues without acknowledging the science or hearing the town residents. This is indeed very concerning. Thank you. You're muted, Kate. Kate. Sorry, um, we're still taking public input. Is there anybody else who wishes to give some public input? Okay. Seeing none, I think we can move to our LEPC update. And tonight, um, Alan Lewis, who is our official um, 
member of the LEPC, um, Barney and I have been attending many of the meetings, and I know uh, Nathan has and Leek has uh, on occasion as well, but um, Alan is our official um, representative. Uh, he will give us the LEPC update tonight. Thank you, Kate. Actually, I was on the uh, LEPC before I was on the Board of Select. Oh, well, so. <laughs> I just kind of carried over by default, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, uh, we gave uh, Chief Fisher the night off. He's been working very hard lately, and uh, he deserves a, a little bit of a respite. Uh, so uh, we had a meeting uh, on June 22nd. Uh, that was Monday morning. We have we normally meet at 10 o'clock on Monday mornings. Uh, and the I'll just do the highlights of that meeting. Uh, number one was the Board of Health. Uh, Linda Fantasia reported that the numbers have not changed in Carlisle since the uh, for the last couple of weeks. That's a good thing. In fact, uh, as you probably have heard, the numbers for the state are very positive with, with about a 2% to two, two and change percent of uh, positive testing, uh, which is actually speaks very well. And, and thank, to, thank you to everybody who is uh, respecting the, the need to wear masks and social distancing. Apparently it's all working very, very well. Uh, the other thing is there was some confusion over the quarantine uh, requirements for the state of Massachusetts. And uh, according to Linda, the, uh, the, the way it is, is if you go out of state and uh, come back, uh, you need to quarantine, but not if you're coming from a vacation home in a neighboring state. Uh, that those uh, are for people who've been from a high uh, prevalence of COVID area like Florida, Arizona, Oklahoma. Uh, but if you're going to New Hampshire, Maine, Rhode Island, uh, you don't need to quarantine when you return, according to uh, the Board of Health. Uh, the, the fire chief, Brian Soros, uh, reported we did have a, uh, during, in fact, during uh, the uh, parade last week uh, for, for graduation, uh, we had a brush fire and just a reminder to everybody that, uh, that things are very dry right now. We haven't had rain in a while. Of we're going to get some tomorrow perhaps, but uh, please be careful. Uh, the, uh, the brush fire uh, probability is very high right now and we have uh, not great capability to respond to it. Uh, a lot of people are on vacation right now and we need to be very, very careful. So please uh, watch what you're doing in terms of brush fires. Uh, the co uh, Council on Aging uh, said that requests for medical rides are now up. This is reflective of the idea that hospitals are now accepting uh, more patients for uh, things that simply aren't uh, emergencies, but some routine care is being done and they're providing uh, uh, rides now uh, using the, uh, the vans to hospitals for those seniors who need it. Uh, the neighborhood response team, uh, Laurie Eckler, uh, reported that the uh, that's, that whole system is being reconfigured uh, now that school is out. I guess yesterday was the last day of school. Uh, there was a food drive over the weekend, and we thank everybody who participated in that, uh, both for the uh, parade on Friday and town meeting on Saturday. Uh, we uh, delivered a full trailer load of food to CCHS uh, yesterday, and uh, they were very grateful for it. So thank you to all who responded to that. That was very, very nice. Uh, the Acton Food Pantry was gonna be closed for one week a month now, but gaining ground is gonna fill the gap. So we will continue to deliver food to the seniors who are in need. Uh, there are 26 seniors participating in gaining ground this summer. Uh, we're still delivering cards and plants to seniors. Uh, they love the cards. The, the, uh, they, even more than the food, they like the idea that uh, the kids are sending thank you notes and uh, just sending we care about you notes to the seniors and they're very, they're responding extremely positively to that. And uh, they are putting out uh, more notice to high school kids. There are some seniors who need to have some yard work done who can't do it themselves. And uh, there are kids, uh, high school students who need community service hours. And uh, so requests are going back out to them to uh, help some of the seniors who need that help. Uh, Jim O'Shea, uh, the superintendent of schools, uh, reported on the, that yesterday was the last day of school. Uh, graduation was great and he thanked everybody who participated and especially the fire and police uh, who participated in that. Everybody loves a good fire engine running in a parade. Uh, it was a great way to end the year. 
there was going to be a, a training for staff of the school uh, on July 6th uh, to get ready for the summer program. There is going to be a summer program, which will be a in-person summer program with the students uh, being accommodated at school with uh, all the safeguards in place. Uh, and there's going to be a training program for the teachers and staff uh, prior to that. The library is, uh, of course, now doing curbside pickup. Uh, the response has been wonderful to that. Uh, again, people have responded very, very well to the idea that they can now get books. Uh, the, the ability to borrow books from uh, neighboring libraries is also now back up, but that's going a little bit more slowly because there's a huge backlog on that. And so as they transfer the books by <laughs> big cartons of books from library to library, uh, they have to be sorted. They have to be uh, either disinfected or left for a couple of days until the virus uh, is uh, until safe for the virus to uh, be used. And uh, so that's uh, that's going on. So the library is back in action. They're looking forward to eventually uh, perhaps having uh, on-site visits from people, but that's not happening just yet. Uh, Town meeting was a, was a great success. Thank you to everybody who participated in town meeting. We did meet our quorum. Uh, the entire meeting took 51 minutes, I'm told. Uh, a new record for the town of Carlisle. Uh, we're gonna try to get Board of Selectmen's meetings uh, down to that level one of these days. Uh, <laughs> it says here somewhere in small print. Uh, the downside is that uh, unemployment in Carlisle is still around 18%. Uh, we're concerned about that in terms of its effect on the ability to pay property taxes and rent and uh, mortgages and all that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, we're concerned about those who are suffering in silence and uh, we're worried about the ability to collect taxes in the long term. We'll have to wait and see into July uh, what kind of effect that's going to have on town revenues. Uh, next, next Tuesday is the election. Uh, Again, we're encouraging people to uh, early vote or do absentee ballots by mail to try to limit the number of people who have to go to town hall and participate in person. But if you want to do that, we're prepared for that. Uh, we're going to have uh, a, a nice safe environment there. Uh, we'll have uh, distancing set up outside. You'll be admitted uh, in, in, in by uh, individual person. There'll be a gate, gate, gatekeeper at the door and we'll have multiple uh, voting booth set up inside with distancing available there and disinfection between each voter that votes. So again, uh, please do vote, uh, vote by mail if you can. If you can't, uh, please come to town hall, bring a mask, you know, you'll need a mask to get in and, uh, and exercise your right to vote. It's, it's, it's uh, one of the great uh, privileges we have in this country. Uh, and again, thanks to all the schools. The schools have been wonderful in supporting town hall, both with uh, computers, with expertise. Uh, they were very, very helpful in terms of, of the uh, uh, election of the uh, town meeting on uh, Saturday by helping set up and break down the, the uh, chairs and making sure everybody was safe. So that's about it. Uh, that's my report for the LEPC. We, again, we're meeting, still meeting every uh, Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Alan um, from anybody, either the, from the public or from the board uh, in regard to the LEPC? Which again, if, for those latecomers and they don't know, LEPC is the um, Local Emergency Planning Committee. Um, yeah, Alan, you, you stated that um, uh, the quarantine responsibilities uh, for people who are coming home or coming into the state from other states um, isn't necessarily just if it's a neighboring state. Um, is, that a, is that a mandatory quarantine or is it a suggested quarantine? And is there any, are there any guidelines? Like what if your vacation spot is in Florida? It's, it's I, according to uh, Linda, it's a, it's a suggestion. Uh, and if you look at the, the signs, if you drive in and out of state, I've been back and forth a couple times. I have a boat in Maine. Uh, it says you are urged to quarantine when you come in. Uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a mandate, but it's one that we hope people will use common sense. If you go to a, an area where you are uh, likely to be in contact with people who have the virus, 
uh, then when you come back, you are ur again urged to quarantine. So it is it is a suggestion, but a strong suggestion. On the other hand, if you're just going somewhere, you know, you're going up to uh, New Hampshire to shop and come back uh, there, the quarantine is certainly not required. Okay, so it's not it's not required anywhere. It's just more strongly urged in some circumstances than in others. That's correct. Okay, that's Thank that's you. that's the guidance we have received. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, um, we can move on to our town accountant salaries and wages, transfers and revolving funds for fiscal 20. And I see Priscilla's there and she, I see also that she's unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> she's all set. Yep. Um, I, Tim, you gave out the, the rate changes. You're not muted. Unmute. Tim is mute. You're muted. I did. Yeah, I, I did give out the uh, uh, proposed FY21 uh, rate sheets. And that's really all you're looking to do tonight, Priscilla. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, mo um, you know, mostly it's a 2% increase. There's a few uh, grades and grades and step changes, and those are reflected there too. They're mo almost all the non con people. It's I did put Tim on this list. I did put Peggy on this list, um, but that's that's the work I did, and it starts July first if you accept it. I would move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the proposed fiscal 2021 payroll changes dated June. 19, 2019, to exclude those employees under contractual arrangements and those union represented employees. Is that 2019 the date correct or should that be 2020? That should be 2020. Mine Thank says you. 2020. <laughs> Mine says 2019. Okay. okay. 2020. Yep. Second. Um, any further discussion? Um, Nathan, is that your hand? Yep. Yeah, sorry. My hand was quicker than clicking the unmute. <laughs> Um, the, uh, just a quick question. Uh, so, uh, town meeting, we, we, uh, voted a flat budget. Um, so this means that we're telling we did, that we're going ahead and we're increasing the salary line by at least probably two and a half percent or so, right. With all the steps and everything. Um, and that, but that, so that means that departments are going to have to, uh, make sure that they're underspending in other areas in order to stay within budget on a month to month basis, right? And um, this isn't a, you know, the seeing we had town meeting, Nathan, we aren't on a 112 basis anymore. The 112 budget doesn't have to be followed, uh, but you're right. They, they have less money with an increase and it all depends on what happens in September. You know, like if, if the 2% isn't given, then Hours may have to be cut. I don't know. Um, so, right. Yeah. But this this we, was a discussion and a, a decision that actually we made at our last meeting that we did not want to deny the non-union um, employees the two percent cola until September because the union people were getting not only that but they were getting their steps and. We didn't right. feel okay. Fair. Okay, so I wasn't at that meeting, so it's good to have a little bit of the background. Um, so it's just, it's just important that departments understand that they're going to have to underspend right. on a month by month basis to be able to cover this salary, which is a significant underspend because most of their expenditures are salary. Yeah, that's correct, and that was actually discussed and noted at our during our discussion. Okay, and. And, and, that, and, and the department leads have been notified of this, Tim? Yes. Oh. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I, I send out a year-end letter, and I, I'm wait, I was waiting for you for this meeting before I did it. Um, I will include, a, you know, I, I always include a line. I'm going to include a line, you know. I always ask for their budget for the new year. This year I'm saying, remember, your budget is flat right now until the fall. So, right. It's actually um, their budget is down lower. by about two and a half percent. That's right. Right. Two percent. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a um, 
motion on the table and it was seconded. Seconded. <laughs> um, and we've had some discussion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, by roll call vote. All those in favor? Oh, Barney, you are muted. See, you're moving, but we can't hear what you're saying. And you're still muted. There you go. There you go. Yeah, sorry. Arnold, I. Donskalillo, I. Brown, I. Lewis, I. Reed, I. Thank you very much. All right, so, Priscilla, do you have other things? Uh, the yeah. fiscal 20 transfers? <laughs> Uh, we don't, I don't have the transfers tonight. Um, we talked to the finance committee and we're going to do that just be the same meeting we do the budget, the, um, the reserve fund transfers if there's any needed. However, I did look at my numbers and it's staying totally what I've been telling all year. The, where we need help is the fraud audit, voc ed, snow and ice, the vets agent and benefits and blanket insurance and we can we have my um last year bonnie put in uh some money into long-term debt interest that we didn't need and group insurance has some money so that's where the transfers will happen um i'm thinking finance committee probably will meet on the 13th um or the 15th and if you meet at your 14th, uh, July 14th meeting, I'll come back and do those transfers. The other thing with them is not all the figures are firm. Uh, the voc ed, we're still dealing with paying the buses. Um, we, um, it's a you know, part of the law is we can't pay for services not rendered. Uh, and once COVID started, the bus drivers, you know, the buses weren't working. Uh, however, um, there's been legislation to, to let us, but we have to go into an agreement with the bus company and that's being worked out. So that, that number's not done yet. Um, the vet ben benefit, there's still one more bill to come in and blanket insurance, I can do a good guess, but by July 14th, I'll, I'll know better, so. That th those are like I think I think I've said more than once here that those are the transfers for this year. Um, are, are there any questions for Priscilla? Any of those? Not for me. While Priscilla is uh, here, maybe we could take up uh, an item in my uh, town administrator's report regarding vacation and personal time carryover. I know that. It's a matter that is of great interest to Priscilla because she's the one who has to calculate this for everyone. So, uh, okay, if we could do that, I think that's a great idea, especially since we don't have our seven thirty item anymore. Right. So. Okay. Well, in in light of the pandemic, as you can imagine, a number of employees have not been able to uh, schedule uh, vacation days or use their uh, two allotted personal days for the fiscal year, and those expire uh, June thirtieth technically. Uh, so my recommendation to you is uh, we have a 90 day extension on personal time and a, a six month extension on carryover of excess uh, accrued vacation time to give people an opportunity to, to schedule that time off when it's appropriate uh, to do so. I think that's ample time to, uh, uh, you know, for people to schedule that leave. Uh, so basically, people would have to use the excess during the extension and carry over no more than they would normally be able to at the end of the uh, extended period. So at the end of the 90 days, they could only carry over the two personal days that they, they normally would have. And uh, uh, employees, their, their vacations calculate on their, their anniversary of hire date. So this proposal would... Uh, give people an additional time period to uh, get uh, their, their accrued balance down to two weeks of uh, vacation. That's the maximum that anyone can carry over. And, uh, you know, understandably, people are, are kind of concerned about that. And it, it doesn't feel very good to take time away from people that they've earned. So I would ask the board to consider extending uh, the uh, carryover dates for both uh, personal and vacation time. So, uh, Kate, if I may. Sure. Um, so, Tim, um, what uh, 
what's your thought behind one being 90 days and one being, uh, was it six months? Uh, well, I think the, the personal day, I'm proposing a short time there because that, that leave normally expires uh, June 30th. It's only good you know, July 1st or the following June 30th. So I think people are in the mindset of using those days uh, sooner than they would vacation days. And uh, anyone who's sitting there with two days now and, and no opportunity to use them uh, by June 30th would have until September 30th to, to schedule that time. And I think that, you know, I think uh, six months would be a long time to, to schedule those two personal days, I think. Yeah, but some so, people may have, you know, what, a couple weeks of vacation time that they'd have to use? Right, right. So that's why I guess we're proposing a longer time to to use the, the vacation because it I guess I don't, three weeks. Yeah, I guess I don't. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to. You know, whatever is easiest on Priscilla. But uh, what I worry about is if you make it six months, that you're going to have an awful lot of people gone within that six month period of time. And I was just wondering, did you think about just making it for, you know, that that for the one year they, they can carry over for four weeks, but it has to be cleaned up by the end of one year elapsing. Yeah, yeah. well, the, the, the six month is, is from their anniversary date. So it depends on when they were hired. So they're not, it's not the same six month period I got for it. everyone. Yeah. So it wouldn't, wouldn't all happen at once, thankfully. Okay. Well, so we can vote on it. I'll make, go ahead and make the motion that we approve uh, a 90 day extension for the carryover of personal leave and a six month extension of carryover of excess accrued vacation. Is there second. a second? Oh, okay, so Barney seconded that. Um, any further discussion? Um, we can have a roll call vote. All those in favor? <clears throat> Arnold, aye. Oscar Lillow, aye. Brown, aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. So just very quickly, now that that's been voted on, Tim, if, if you find that there is a discussion, can you come back to the board and extend it further out because because you're having staffing problems? Certainly, certainly, yeah, okay. if, if you're presenting a problem. Yeah, cause it's just hard to say no to somebody's vacation if they're going to lose it. Yeah. Um, so you have less control as a manager um, about when somebody's using vacation, but but you have the you can come back to the, the you know come back to the board and say hey I want to extend it and and the board can extend it again. This isn't a special COVID thing, right? It, no, it could, it could be revisited by the board. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. And and I think the personal time and pe uh, personal time off, um, people have asked more about that. Um, vacation time, you know, I check everybody's anniversary date. I know everybody's anniversary date, <laughs> and there's not a lot of people who who this is affecting, I don't think. Um, maybe, maybe me, you know, I might, but I, I try to take it by December. I, I usually use an extra three months to get my time in. Um, but, you know, it's so rotating that I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and, um, and but like I said, there's right now two people, and um, one of them already has told me what what they're gonna do, and the other one I would have to talk to, you know. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, Priscilla. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. So, Tim, do we need to open the EverSource public hearing, or do we just uh, postpone it? You, 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 you'd need to open it and, and then vote to continue it to July okay. 28th at 7.30 p.m. All right, do I have a motion to open the Eversource public hearing uh, for a road opening permit on Church Street at CPS? I think so you moved. just open it. I think you just open it, Kate. Yeah. I just opened, <laughs> okay, I've just opened it. Do I have a motion to, uh, to continue it then till uh, July 28th at 7.30? I move that the Eversource public hearing on the road opening be postponed to July 28th at uh, 7.30 in the evening. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, that was a tie between Luke and Barney and uh, Jen, you're just gonna have to figure that one out. Um, uh, <laughs> you can have it, Luke. 
<laughs> I won. <laughs> you always beat me. Actually, Alan always beats me. But right. the only time I can get a second in was when he makes the motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is there any discussion about continuing this? Um, right. Uh, we have a roll call vote. All those in favor of continuing? Arnold, aye. Oscar, aye. Brown, aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. So that's postponed till July 28th at 7.30. So we're an hour ahead, folks. Um, let us go ahead and finish, well, do we, what do we want to do? Finish the town administrator support a report? Because we have already okay. had some people here for. Sure, okay. okay. Uh, second item in my report, uh, the uh, Bedford Road Complete Streets project will uh, begin next Monday, uh, June 29th, as was originally scheduled. We had a uh, meeting uh, today out in the field with the, uh, uh, well, with Sylvia Willer from the CONSCOM uh, and Allied Paving to mark out the location of the erosion controls for the project, and that went uh, uh, very well. Uh, also working with the Garden Club to uh, uh, possibly extend an electrical conduit to the center island uh, in the Rotary as part of the project. We, late this afternoon, we got a project schedule from Allied Paving, and we're gonna be posting that uh, to the website, sending that to the Mosquito. Uh, notices will be delivered to uh, abutters and residents in the uh, project area uh, later in the week uh, to uh, inform them that the project be getting underway uh, next week but uh, you know so far so good uh, um, you know Allied's been uh, you know good to work with so far we'll see what happens once we get underway but uh, uh, again we had a pretty good uh, pretty good meeting uh, there and I'll, I'll distribute that schedule to all of you uh, right away as well so that I know mean, I know there'll be questions and perhaps if the mosquito could print it for us that would answer some questions as well Okay, uh, a couple of items that uh, didn't make it into my report. One is uh, from Chief Fisher. He's requesting permission to begin the recruitment process uh, for full-time officer. He may have mentioned to you that Officer Rich Tornquist uh, is retiring uh, in July after I think nearly 30 years uh, as a police officer in Carlisle. So he requests the board's permission uh, to begin that process. I can't imagine that you'd, you'd say, no, we need to, <laughs> need to replace him. So, but if the board, you know, I, I can pass it along to the chief if you, uh, if you concur, I assume you do. Okay, can we uh, get a sense of the board? Uh, yeah, I don't think it requires a formal vote. I just no, need right. to. right, I just want a sense. Uh, it's, it's, let me put it to you this way. Uh, if there, is there anybody um, who has a, um, problem or a concern about this, this process and his starting the process. Okay, so I don't think there's any concern with his starting the process and I think we can give him the support of the board to go start. Okay, very good. Very good. And, and I, I also um, wanted to talk with you about the, uh, the proposed digital infrastructure uh, project. Uh, for the town of Carlisle. I know that uh, you've probably seen a lot of information uh, from the project team in recent days and it's really it's a product of a lot of volunteer work by R.J. Matthew and David Mackay and Scott Hefner and uh, you know I, I think it's it's a very uh, important project uh, for the town. They started off looking at uh, a digital phone system for the town but realized that uh, uh, they needed a, a solid digital infrastructure uh, first before they could uh, talk about the phone system. So if you've seen the requirements document that they developed, it, it's really uh, pretty comprehensive as far as uh, what a fiber optic network uh, for the town would in, include. And I won't go through all the equipment and the switches and the cabling and everything that would need to go into that. But uh, I've been talking with RJ in recent days and he's very gung-ho kind of person, I, I think we, we butted heads a little bit uh, on the fact that I said, in order for the project to go forward, RJ, 
I need the Board of Selectmen to approve that and, and say, uh, you know, full speed ahead. You know, I explained to him that, uh, you know, we've, we've had a, a freeze on discretionary spending in place. And so for the board to, uh, to lift that, you know, you you need to vote that this is a, is a very important project for the town and ought to go forward. And then from there, if that decision has been made, there's a discussion of funding uh, the project. And, and there again, uh, RJ has identified funding sources within uh, three departments uh, in the community. And, uh, you know, those, those can be used as the funding source to encumber those funds you need to have a contract in place. I did confirm uh, that the vendor that they have uh, unified uh, communications is on the state contract list. And so the town could contract with this vendor without, uh, you know, without procurement, without seeking additional quotes, although they did contact at least three firms and a couple of them really couldn't, couldn't offer the uh, services that uh, that they were looking for. So it's not that they only contacted the one company. Uh, so I guess my purpose in bringing this to the board is that, you know, we, we, we do need a vote of the board to, to advance this project, uh, you know, given the situation that we're in. And then there's the, uh, if that's, if the vote is to go forward, then the discussion would turn to, you know, do we, do we fund this by contracting immediately encumbering these funds? from these various departments or do we look at it a different way? I, I think certainly, uh, you know, maybe the, the, the way to get things going faster would be to encumber uh, those funds and to, uh, and to move forward uh, on, on that basis. Uh, you know, certainly there are other, other ways to look at it, but uh, I did talk to RJ, the team yesterday, and I said that I would uh, advance this uh, information to you tonight, and I do, but I do think that you know the step one is that the board needs to, uh, you know, uh, approve moving forward with the project before we can talk about how we might fund it. And my understanding is this needs to be done. The the, the project needs to be accomplished by the end of the fiscal year. Is that correct? I, I, I think that was only a, a factor of uh, uh, their understanding that the, the, the funds would expire June 30th, and then it was discovered that they could be encumbered and carried forward into the next fiscal year. So I think the urgency to complete it by June 30th uh, was not, uh, you know, wasn't, uh, it, it was not as urgent as initially communicated. It was only because of the source of the funds uh, being FY20, uh, you know, there wasn't a discussion of a mechanism to carry those funds forward. And th there is that mechanism. You can encumber funds if you have a contract or a purchase order to do so. Um, so I, I guess, you know, I'd like to chime in here a little bit, if I may. Um, so uh, you may all recall that um, uh, I worked with Tim to, to put this project together and to ask RJ to lead it. Um, I had initially, um, I had given a timeline of the, um, uh, the budget being put together and the project being put together so that um, it would be ready to review with the Board of Selectmen and FinCom this coming fall, early winter when, we're, when we were doing next year's budget. Well, next year meaning the year after next. <laughs> Um, next year, starting like next Wednesday. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I had that in mind and RJ, RJ did reach out to me a, a couple of times over the last month and, and um, I didn't rate it as high a priority as I should have. Um, I do have some concerns um, about this um, uh, that I would like to be able to work with them to address. Um, one specifically is that we have a computer support technology consulting company that works for us who currently manage our switches and they have not been communicated with at all. Um, and so if you read RJ's documents, one of the issues in there is working out um, who's gonna manage this still needs to be done. 
Um, and uh, another one is like needing a room, I think, for somebody who would be hired to be able to manage this network. Um, so um, I do have concerns about our just saying, go ahead and do it now. Um, I'd like the opportunity to work through some of those concerns um, with the team. Um, I'm, I'm worried that uh, the, the financial part is pushing it faster than uh, the project organization is able to keep up. And um, whenever I see that, um, it always leads to a lot of hiccups and issues within, um, within a project. So I would like, so the other thing is, is going back several years, um, uh, in fact, I don't think anybody um, was on the board um, who's here um, except for myself at the time. Um, uh, I put together a uh, proposal um, requesting funds from town meeting. Uh, it was in three phases. Um, that's been the crux of what we've been asking town meeting for money for. Um, what uh, what RJ has proposed is a an absolutely essential, super critical project that the town really needs to support. Um, it is uh, really phase, it's actually phase three of our fiber installation that we did, I think five years ago, maybe four years ago. I think it was five years ago, um, where phase one was installing the fiber. Phase two was getting the fire and police up on it so that they could communicate with the communication systems. And then uh, phase three and four were bringing up all the other buildings. And so what RJ has here is kind of phase three and four um, in, um, you know, rolled into one, one phase. Um, and again, it's critical. Um, if we don't have this, um, you know, we can't have a unified phone system uh, throughout the town. We really need to have this, this network in place. And we're, you know, we did this fiber um, and, uh, and, and we're, we're underutilizing. In fact, in many cases, we're just not utilizing it at all. Um, so with all that said, um, I just want to point out that we have asked town meeting for the funds for this phase, and we have the money to do it. And so I would um, hope that, you know, what we could do is say, look, this is critical, important. Let's make sure that we're doing it right. We have the money to do it um, and, uh, and utilize those funds so that there's less pressure um, on the current team to try to get it done really, really quickly. Um, so that's, that's my thoughts on this. Nathan, the, uh, the proposal that RJ sent to us is relatively specific in ter terms of what is included in this particular uh, phase of the project. Uh, is is it is there something about that that gives you concern? I mean, that really doesn't have to do with who's going to manage it and all that sort of thing. It's all it all has to do with physical uh, infrastructure. Uh, is w would it make a difference? Oh. No, I mean, initially, initially, I was concerned about it, but I clarified um, with Scott Hefner this morning that um, it is, in fact, the same stuff we already bought before. Um, it's, uh, it's different models, but um, that makes sense for us to do that. Um, my, my concern more is we're going to a completely different vendor and buying hardware, and we don't know who's going to manage it. And we have not spoken to our current vendor about whether or not they're managing it. We haven't even asked our current vendor what would it cost for them to do it because they know our infrastructure. Um, and we haven't talked to them to know what, you know, what our possibilities are with them. And so I worry that, uh, you know, this could cause a problem with the current vendor, that they wouldn't be able to support it, that there'd be handoff problems, that there'd be finger pointing. Um, you know, this, this is the core component of what everything's gonna be driven on. And you just really need to make sure that everybody is involved. Everybody's, everybody has their input in how it's designed and, and is on the same page, um, rather than kind of shooting first and, and then trying to figure it out later. I guess I'm not, still not clear. The, the physical equipment 
is dependent upon the manager? What they're, what they, they are not just selling us the physical equipment. They are also selling us the services to design, implement, and install that equipment. Okay, but that's all, that's all fairly specified, isn't it? Not at this point, it's not. It's not? Okay. No. Not, not the logical networks and things like that. That's not, that has not been worked out at this point. Okay, and that, and that is equipment dependent? Uh, it's the, the, the vendor is going to be configuring that. But if this, if the, if the equipment that is currently specified in this particular phase of the project were to be installed, would that prohibit that from happening? Or is, or is the equipment common to, to whoever the manager is? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. Physically installing the hardware, anybody can do. It's just a screwdriver and a, and a screw. Yeah, and, and the racks and the switches and all that sort of thing are generic, are they not? I mean, they're relatively generic. Uh, well, installing a switch in a rack is, you know, standard, you know, right. whatever number of views, 19 inch rack, you know, all of that is standard. Okay. But that's and not what we're actually paying them for though. What we're actually paying them for is to configure the switches and, and develop the, the network. And as, as, I, as I understand it, that, that design has not happened, but that company would be working with us to do it and drive tech would not be involved. And I'm worried about that. So I, I think we should do this project, um, but I think that we should take a step back, get everybody involved in it and not have June 30th as a deadline driving the project particularly since we don't, you know, we've already asked town meeting for this money for this purpose. And we should utilize that money in order to be able to implement this. So, is, sorry, is this money that's in the technology fund? Is that? That's correct. Okay. So, and I just, I, and now I'm thoroughly confused. So, so we would be asking them to install these switches, configure these switches, but not necessarily manage these switches, right? That's, and the company who and the company who currently manages doesn't. I mean, obviously you could figure it out, but your concern is that without A talking to B, it could get messy, right? And then and then at the end of the day, it could be the the company that we currently have may may not be able to manage, or we'd have to switch to the. I I, I mean, I get what you're saying, and I you know I think if town meeting voted on it previously, we should use that money. Um, we shouldn't necessarily worry about encumbering funds um, and, and getting an, an agreement signed. But it, I mean, this is something that, you know, could probably result, be resolved in a few weeks, right? I mean, it's just getting people talking, right? It's not. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like we're going to lose a quote or, or anything, right? It's just. I, I would, I, I don't, I don't know that there's a deadline of June 30th on that quote. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's too critical a thing to not do right, right? So, I mean, we take it's our the time foundation of everything yeah. that's going to be built, and that's right. why I'm worried about it. If it was, if we're just talking about one building or whatever, I wouldn't be as worried. This is everything is going to run on this, yeah, yeah. And so, the resiliency of this thing, the, the performance of this, yeah, um, is absolutely critical, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it definitely makes sense to bring the vendor that's currently managing. And knows the infrastructure in, yeah. you know, to be involved in that discussion. So yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Nathan. Yeah. So let me be clear. So you're, what you're saying is that if the if we if we put this equipment in now, uh, in whatever the whatever the scope of the project is, uh, that in fact uh, the current if and we wanted to stay with our current vendor in terms of management that might not be possible. Is that correct? Uh, you know, I-, I, does, does, I the, the, These switches and things are not, are not sufficiently generic that regardless of who the manager is, the, the system would continue to function. So I am, I am certain that our current vendor can manage this equipment because they already are for us. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm concerned about is they're, des they're, they're managing a network that is a design um, that we worked with them to develop. Another company is going to come in, not talk to that other company, and design another network. 
without any communication. And then we're going to say, okay, now drive tech, you go ahead and manage this. It's going yeah, to be yeah. messy. Then there will be a lot of finger pointing. Right. What I'm I suggesting is we take a step back and we make sure that that communication is all in place before we start signing anything. Okay. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess that's my confusion. I, I'm, I was under the impression that this was simply the installation of physical equipment and it didn't have anything to do with how the system would eventually operate. It was simply putting the infrastructure in place to connect the system together in a, in a modern and, uh, uh, in a system that would be capable of, regardless of who was the manager, but maybe that if, if, if that's not true, that's that, that's, that's, the difference that's that I not understand. my understanding. I mean, I can take another look at it here, but um... yeah, and I I had a, another understanding <laughs> um, that what we have um, did not have adequate documentation, so we didn't even really know what we had, and that part of this project was to. Um, kind of clean up and, and inventory and document what we had so that uh, it would be easily more easily handed off as well. Well, I think that's because we haven't communicated with Drive, Drive Tech, who has the documentation on everything and how it's designed. Okay. Um, Tim, do you know so, about- no. Alan, this is configuring it. It's, it's enabling management, it's configuring the switch VLANs and the routing. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, uh, well, that's it. And then they're handing okay. it off. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that, if that's the case, then this, that is beyond what I, my understanding was of what this particular phase of the project would have accomplished. So my, my, I was under the understanding this was simply take, you know, updating the physical equipment, uh, you know, give, giving the capability there so that it would be something to work on. Yeah, that's, that's not the way I read this. Okay. Well, I think we need to get that straightened out. Yeah. Because I, I mean, if, 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 what you're, if what you're saying is true, then I fully agree with you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm just reading the, the Carlisle digital infrastructure draft document that he sent out. Okay, thank you. So I'm just, I, what, so, so, you know, my request is that, you know, we, we, we don't sign right now and we don't say we're going to encumber funds, um, you know, and, you know, we utilize the funds we already have. We slow this down a little bit and you know, let me get the team together and, and let, you know, and work through all of these issues um, and, and do it quickly. But um, I just want to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Can we have some sort of commitment on a time frame, though? Um, so that, you know, we don't, so it's not one of the things that slips through the cracks again, because with COVID and everything else, and we're all busy, things, People mean well, but um, we've been, I've well, been I think the about time this for three it, years. <laughs> but I mean, just to, to be realistic about it, I mean, I understand what you're saying, Kate, but uh, I think COVID has slowed things down. Um, the, the time frame on this is it needs to be in place by July 1st of next year if town meeting approves a new phone system. You know, now I'm not saying that it, yeah, I would, it would take that long because I'd like to get it done and be able to, to move on. But, you know, I just want to say that they're, they're, yeah. the, the time frame that I laid out for the team is be ready for July 1 of next year. Um, with that said, this could benefit many things and it makes sense for us to move forward on it. And so I don't see any reason why we can't get it done this summer, depending upon everybody's availability and willingness to stay engaged in the project. And, and Tim, the, this, the, we were led to believe that this was a, a time critical thing that had to be done bef before June 30th. Is that not the case? I don't believe that to be the case. I think uh, that, that was the first impression. The second one was that the funds needed to be encumbered by June 30th, which they would if we were encumbering them. If we're not encumbering funds and we're instead using funds that are already uh, in an account, then, then the, that time sensitivity is not there. You know, okay. The project could be done in July or August or, you know. 
and we're well, confident the funds are in place. Yeah, and we're confident that the funds are there in in the um, tech budget. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. That seems that money. seems to <laughs> take the pressure off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm not trying to stop the project. I just want to be very clear. I am not trying to stop the project. This is a super critical project. I'm just trying to make yeah. sure. Just, just trying to make sure that uh, it's on the right track. Understand. And yeah. we, we are, we are hearing your commitment to see it through, Nathan. So that's uh, we, we're all witness to that. Even you say it even when he's off the board, right, Bernie? You're not, you're not doing anything for the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, can we go back in time? And uh, Tim, could you turn off the recording, please? <laughs> 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 Just lose that portion of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a gap in the tape. Yeah, that's right. Tight. Right. Okay. Well, um, I think what what I'd like to still summarize the position of the board is that this is a, a, an extremely important project that we would like to see it get done. Um, a lot of the work. It seems like there has been a lot of work that has been done so far. So we would not like to unduly delay completion of the work that's been done to, you know, here to here, um, and that uh, we do need to um, talk about, um, we, we want to, you know, I, we don't want to come to the town and ask for more money, so to speak, for something that we already have money for. We don't want it to be a little bit like the chapter 90 funds. Um, have it be a surprise that oh we had those funds <laughs> you know so let's but let's get it done if we can yeah I, I guarantee that if some people really were paying attention yeah you know, I mean there's there's no reason why anybody wouldn't be able to say hey wait a second Nathan already presented this and we already approved the funds well it, you might be but it, yeah. uh, that was before probably any of us else were on the on the board, so none of us may have known about it, and so, and so the pressure was for getting it funded and have you know having, I think the other so, well let me back up one second though, because the school is involved in this too, and they're part of this project, um, and they they uh, have been involved in this and have they do have some funds that they wanted to to encumber for this fiscal year. So you, would our IT funds, IT fund cover their portion and then they're off the hook for that as well? Absolutely. This is a core network component. Okay. And, and we talked about that when, you know, kind of like when we took the server room, um, you know, it was, it, it, it's, it's a core thing. It makes sense for us to fund it centrally. Though I will say that Scott Scott Hefner is doing most of the heavy lifting on how that network would be designed. Okay. Um, and so they are, they are staff wise heavily committed to this project. Okay. So um, staff wise, I mean, we do spend money. Uh, let me, uh, I, I'm going to kind of put that, this whole, that whole, you know, network thing aside and kind of segue to the other thing that we had uh, on the, where was that? Uh, I think it was on the TA thing about talking about uh, pooling resources between us and the school for, for instance, IT or, you know, facilities management. Isn't that on your no. thing, Tim? That, that's coming up. Uh, we, we talked, uh, we've been meeting on uh, uh, pooling uh, facilities and procurement uh, resources. Jim O'Shea and, and Rob Furtado, Steve Bastek and I. Um, so, so that, it'll be coming. Yeah. It's on the agenda for the 28th. Oh, okay. That's where I knew I saw it on, on the TA yeah. report, but it's down at the bottom with our, okay. So I do think that this is also part of and parcel of that conversation that um, we will get a lot more done and get a lot more forward um, if we have in-house IT um, management, not somebody outside like drive tech and in-house, you know, maintenance people and um, start to, uh, try to build up those systems. It'll be more. Yeah, I think it just it just gets a little bit uh, a, a little bit more difficult. I mean, you know, so I agree with you. I think that we need to start. You know, and in that proposal I made, you know, years ago, I was saying in three years we should hire an IT person, and we're now five years out. Um, you know, so I agree with that. But I think that we need to 
really understand like what all the IT resources are because one of the benefits of going with a consulting company when you're as small as we are is they deal with vacations and sick and things like that and we don't have to. And if, if we have one IT person, um, then now we have, to, we have to deal with those things. Um, and so I think it would, we would definitely need to pull the school in to make sure that our support and management was very robust across everything um, and not, main, not remaining separate. And with that said, I'll just say that Scott is very involved in what's going on um, at Town Hall. Um, I'm correct, right, Tim? That, that's right, yep. Um, yep. He, goes, he goes to the IT committee, our uh, working group meetings. He's, he's very involved in, in drives things. Oh, that's excellent, because I think we need more of that in town overall, so. Great, um, it's 8.04. Um, was there anything else on the TA report? Sorry, there were three items and that was number three. And no, I've, done, I've got the upcoming meeting schedule. We're gonna obviously move that Eversource hearing the 28th. I noted that Barney, I think is not available on the 28th. You're gonna be out of town, is that right? I hadn't heard from anyone right. else, but she told me, yep, she would be away. Okay. Uh, what, there's no internet in Maine, Barney? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm Zoom going doesn't to. Work. This is upstate New York in the Adirondacks, oh. <laughs> about 40 miles south of the Canadian border. Now, I've been told by my relatives that have been up there already that the internet connection is better. So I could- it, it, No, 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 no. You enjoy your vacation. <laughs> yeah, I was just hoping not to, so I have to zoom in. And I can confirm that the internet is not available in much, much of Maine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I think we'll, we can move to appointments and resignations. Um, and we have a list of resignations, David Freeman um, from the uh, Traffic Pedestrian Safety Advisory Committee and Dan Bojanic from the Deer Agent Deer Committee and Andrew Corwin, um, the Deer Control Committee. And I'd like to thank them all for their service um, on these committees. And Nathan, this is your, uh, while we're talking about resignations, since you decided not to run, um, that's kind of tantamount to a resignation. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, your very long-term service to the town and to thank you very much um, for all the service you've given. Thank you. You're here. You're here. Yes, thank you, thank you Nathan. Yeah, good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> we were all waiting for that, right? Okay. <laughs> this means I'm going to have to ride my motorcycle to Board of Selectmen meetings now, since you won't be riding yours. But. That's right. Yeah. I have a reason. <laughs> uh, we're going to miss you, Nathan. You know, you're always the voice of reason. Yeah, well, no, which is a scary, which is a scary and thought. You ask, ask the thoughtful <laughs> questions. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really going uh, to miss, miss serving the town. I have really enjoyed um, having, having been given that opportunity and, and the trust of the Carlisle residents um, to serve for two terms. Um, it's been very enjoyable. I recommend it to anybody. Um, you know, the, the time commitment isn't as much as you might think unless you're chair um and uh unless there's covid yeah that's what claude said <laughs> it's, it's a very very rewarding and, and fulfilling experience and and hopefully hopefully you know it was a positive one um so but uh uh thank you all and thank you to all carlisle residents for um trusting me to uh to uh, help lead the town and uh and deal with the issues and provide the direction well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Okay, um, we will, can, yeah. sorry, Alan? You need a motion, right? Yes. Okay, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the letter of resignation from David Friedman, member of the Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Committee, effective immediately. And I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the letter uh, of resignation from Deer Agent uh, Dan Vujanic and Police Detective Andrew Corwin from the Deer Control Committee, effective immediately. Second. Um, any discussion? 
All right, well, by roll call vote, all those in favor? Arnold, aye. Oscar Lillow, aye. Brown, aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. Thank you. Now we have um, the annual appointments. And um, you will see there's the, um, the first of the more or less staff and the, and the department head list. And um, I'm going to put those off until our next meeting because whether we appoint them now or not, their appointments will continue until they are reappointment, reappointed. And there are some that we need to complete their evaluations. I prefer to complete everybody's evaluations before we do those um, appointments. So with your permission, um, we won't um, do those tonight. We'll do those at another time when everybody's evaluations are completed. I think that makes a ton of sense, Kate. I mean, it's also just to wait until the elections are over, right? Uh, yes, that too. But, um, you know, these, these are, you know, the, um, but I'm, I'm not talking about the, um, the committee appointments. I'm talking about the staff appointments. The right? annual uh, appointments of public officials. Uh, pu public officials, right. This is, Got it. Yeah. Um, we did, did um, yeah, Jen, I did ask Jen to send you all the uh, chart of um, committees and we do have a number of um, appointments to make and we could step, do you want me to put those up on the screen and we could step through them? Hi, this is RJ, should I join? Or are you guys done? We are done. So I can log off? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Who is that? That's <laughs> cool. Dave, I think. That's Dave, we can't understand Dave you. Model. That's Kate in the tunnel. Yeah, that, okay, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I get um, regularly if I have my screen on. Okay, so um, do you want me to post, <laughs> I guess I had this question. Uh, do you want me to share my screen and you want me to put the uh, um, town committees control seats on? Sure, unless you want Tim to do it, if that's easier. I got it. Okay. Share screen. Are we gonna, are we gonna um, Kate, are we gonna approve the, the specific um, appointments that were listed below the resignations, like for the yes. COA? And yes, and there may be some. Okay. Yeah, there may be some we'll put off, but you know, I'd like to get as many done as possible. So for instance, um, I am proposing to not do the Affordable Housing Trust tonight because um, that's dependent on who is, uh, on the you know the selectmen and so i think we could leave all those people as they are and we'll do that after the election is there any anybody have any problem with that i i don't because there's still enough people there for there to be a quorum if there's something came up yeah okay so and yeah you're still stuck with the job until you're you know <laughs> no actually I'm, I'm not but there's still enough even without there's me still enough for that okay Okay, so uh, then we go to Agricultural Commission and we have Peter Mastromarino, um, whose term expires in 2020. And he has um, written a letter uh, asking to be reappointed. Do we have a, a motion? I move the Board of Selectmen appoint Peter Mastromarino of 212 East Riding Drive uh, to the Agricultural Commission for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2023. Okay. Um, roll call, any, no, discussion? Roll call vote. All those in favor, aye. Arnold, aye. Oscar Lillowai. Brown, aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. Okay. Audit committee, we have Kevin Perkins, um, whose term expired in 2020, who's um, applied to be reappointed for a three-year term. I move that uh, Kevin Perkins of 51 Litchfield Drive be reappointed to the Audit Committee 
for a term to expire June 30th, 2023. Second. All those in favor by roll call. Arnold, Sorry. aye. Oscar Lillow, aye. Brown, aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. You know what? I'm wondering um, if we could make this go faster if we just do a bunch of these at once and we'll do all one vote, okay? Um, so we'll do uh, Board of Registrars, Peggy yeah, Wang. Yeah. Oh. Just, just do the nomination, the, the, the nomination of the second, and then we'll do the voting all, all at once, or unless somebody has a problem with that. I okay. move to okay. appoint Peggy Wang, who's the acting town clerk, uh, lives at 30 Robbins Drive to the Board of Registrars for a term to expire June 30th, 2023. Second. She might be their actual town clerk after uh, June 30th. Um, celebrations committee, everybody has to be reappointed. I move that Scott Evans of 299 Hill Road, Doug Stevenson of 271 Cross Street, Heidi Herring of 322 West Street, and Laura Mullins of 75 West Street be reappointed to the Celebrations Committee for a term to expire in uh, on June, June uh, 30th, 2021. Second. Okay, it looks like um, I think Jen has uh, put a notice in the paper for all the extra vacant positions. It looks like we need one more position there. Mm -hmm. Community Preservation Committee. Um, Though, let me uh, skip that one because that one is um, dependent on the various town uh, elected town boards and committees. So I'm going to skip that one. Conservation Commission. We have uh, Daniel Wells, Kenneth uh, Belitz, and Alex Para, all of whom whose terms expire on 2020, and all of whom wish to be re. re Appointed. Appointed. I move that Daniel L. Wells of 172 Woodridge Road, Kenneth Bellitz of 112 Johnson Road, and Alex Para of 31 Bellows Hill Road be reappointed to the Conservation Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2023. Second. Okay. Conservation Restriction Advisory Committee. Uh, they're all one-year terms. They all need to be reappointed. And they all look like they have letters um, asking to be reappointed on file. All right, you want me to do this one again, huh? You okay. Know, you know what? Um, yeah, I think you could even make the motion that we, you know, that the conservation, current conservation advisory committee be reappointed for, for one-year term. Is that okay uh, with everybody? Okay, yeah. so I move that we reappoint the seven current members of the Conservation Restriction Advisory Committee for a three year for a one year term to expire June thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Second. Council on Aging. We have Anne Quinlan, Sally Hayen, uh, Elizabeth Bojarski. Walter Hickman, uh, who's an associate member, Donna McMullen, who's also an associate, and Wendy Barrow, an associate, all of whom would like to be reappointed. And those are three-year terms, and the associate, associate members are one-year terms. So I move that we appoint Ann Quinnen, 99 Red Pine Drive, Sally Han of 145 Church Street, and Elizabeth Bojarski of 843 Acton Street for a three-year term on the Council on Aging, the term to expire June 30th, 2023, and that we appoint Walter Hickman of 249 Concord Street, Donna McMullen, Five Hillside Road, and Wendy Barrow of 166 Fisk, Fisk Street as associate members with a one-year term to expire June 30th, 2021. Second. Cultural Council. Um, we're going to skip that one because we don't have any applications. 
Um, deer control, we're going to skip for now. Energy task force. Boy. Um, we, there's no, we have no applications, so I'm skipping that till we get the applications on file. Um, historical commission, we have one person. And at Lee. All right, I move the board reappoint Annette Lee of 65 Lowell Street to the Historical Commission for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2023. Second. Household Recycling Committee, there's Rob Perry. I move that we, the board reappoint Rob Perry to the Household Recycling Committee, Rob Perry of 32 East Riding Drive to the Household Recycling Committee for a term of three years to expire June 30th, 2023. Second. Land Stewardship Committee. Uh, Dwight DeMay, Debbie Geltner, and Thomas, Thomas Brownrigg, all of whom have asked to be reappointed. Anybody else want to do one? I don't have their addresses, so I can't. Oh, okay, I can do this. Here, can't you see them on the screen? I'm not sharing my... Uh, oh, there we go. I don't mind right. doing it. I'll, I'll go ahead. I, I move that we appoint uh, Dwight DeMay of 195 Acton Street, Debbie Geltner of 84 Craigie Circle, and Tom Brownrigg of 5 Acton Street to the Land Stewardship Committee for a three-year term to expire June 30, 2023. Sorry, sorry real quick. Deb, Debbie's not at 84 Craigie Circle. That's where I am, and she doesn't live with me. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? This this one's all wrong because Warren Lyman doesn't live at 51 Carlton Road. Oh yeah, no, he he's not there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um and the the Wilmots don't live on Pagebrook. They live in, you know, like um okay, so interesting. Uh let's skip the land stewardship committee until we get that all corrected, please. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Uh, long-term caps. Um, Nathan, you want to still be on long-term caps? <laughs> He's, no, thank you. No? Okay. Um, so we, we need to find somebody for that. We're skipping yeah. that. It's My sheet has you in it, Kate. It does? Yep. Huh. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. All right. Municipal facilities uh, is me. That is me, and I'm there uh, till 20. So nobody's off of that one. Okay. Personnel board, nobody. Recreation commission, we have one person, Amy Smack, but she doesn't look like she's re-upped, so we have to wait for that. Uh, no senior tax advisory committee people look like they've re-upped yet. Traffic and pedestrian safety, nobody's off. Trails committee, Louise hasn't re-upped. Uh, Veterans committee, we need people to re-up. Lori Eckler for youth commission. I'm sure she'll want to do it, but I, we, I'd like to have that uh, confirmed. Zoning Board of Appeals. Again, no re-uppers. All right, that's it. So uh, we had several motions for, for appointment. Um, I didn't hear any discussion on any of these as we went by, so I would like to have a roll call vote on all of them at once. All those in favor? Arnold, aye. Oscar Lillo, aye. Brown, aye. Lewis, aye. Reed, aye. Okay, so we still have a few to do next time around. This always happens to us every year, but at least we got uh, kind of the lion's share out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, did I stop sharing yet? Yes, you did. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. Phew.
Um, Tim, you're not in your usual spot. He's always <laughs> in my upper left-hand corner. I don't know where yeah. you are. No, in yeah. his house. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's true. That's, That's right. true. He's, He's, like a, He's usually in the kitchen. Banished. Was banished to this room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you mean that's yeah. fun. And Jeannie's still in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So where were we? Um, we've done the in annual the appointments, the annual appointments, the town administrator's report, liaison reports. I have two. If anybody else wants to go, I'll or not. Go ahead. All right. I'll go. go ahead. Um uh, for the master plan steering committee, um, we've been working on revising the schedule based on the interruption due to the COVID virus, and um, we uh, I can I can share that with you once the master plan steering committee takes a look at it tomorrow night. But I wanted to just give you the update that it looks like where we're headed is doing. Um, the community, the, the sort of second, uh, the public meeting number three and number four, we did one and two, uh, you know, we'll do sometime this fall and probably likely it's going to be, um, you know, some kind of a online uh, interactive session. Uh, perhaps we will be able to do it in person, we'll see, but, and that um, we're anticipating that the final report from Civic Moxie will be finalized uh, sometime either by the end of the year, or the beginning of January. So that's being pushed at back, you know, about five months from what we originally, you know, we thought we we're going to have it in September. <sighs> so October, November, December. So four months, four months. Um, so just wanted to give you that information. Um, and then on the uh, Deer Control Committee, um, I just wanted to um, say that there's a, that I don't know if you noticed, one of the resignations was Andrew Corwin, you know, from the police department. And Chief Fisher has, uh, we, the Deer Committee has been in touch with him about, does it still make sense to have a representative from the police department on the committee? And he does not think so, doesn't think it's needed, and of course reaffirms that the police department will provide the same support that they've been providing if anything comes up, uh, if there is gonna be another bow hunt. So um, this is not dealing with, um, you know, whether or not there's a bow hunt at all, but we would like to change the charter um, to reflect that we would take off uh, the representative of the police department and then make that an additional citizen at large position, uh, uh, you know, a member, another, so there'd be two citizen at large members and that, um, and so that's being advertised um, to see if people are interested. Um, and then the second piece on the Deer Control Committee is that, um, I have to say this is a very committed committee, um, they have taken the, uh, you know, the items that were discussed at the, at the last meeting and are working on a, um, you know, a revised proposal based on the specific things that were discussed at that last meeting and um, would like to bring that back to the board. And so the sort of option one is um, here's, a, here's a no, basically a no change from last year budget and, um, I mean, sorry, not budget, uh, proposal. Um, and then obviously the board does need to make a decision whether or not there's gonna be a bow hunt this fall or not. Yeah, I, I think we definitely have to narrow down the questions. Um, I think that the, the question is, do we want a bow hunt of any sort? Uh, which is what I was trying to get out of our last one because I didn't want to send them off to you know revise all the re regulations if we didn't want to have a bow hunt anyway. So um, I, we still have got to uh, wrestle that one down to the ground and have it have that discussion and make that decision. Yeah, and uh, I, I 
do we did discuss um you know a, another option would be to um not have a deer hunt this year at all and move toward some kind of a um decision at the spring 2021 town meeting um and and have some kind of a you know education uh, process leading up to that um but then allow the town to make a decision anyway that's that be my problem is going to be I don't, I don't anyway i don't know when you're thinking it would make sense to have that on a board of selectmen agenda but i know from the standpoint of the deer committee the sooner the better well, I think if they have a, you know, when they're when they are ready to come in with a with a recommendation, then we should put it on the agenda. Yeah, they're they're, they're we're meeting Thursday night, and I think the idea would be there'll be a proposal that comes out of that. So okay, good. I said, not going to be my problem. It's going to be Alan's problem. <laughs> I hope. Anyway. Uh, any other liaison reports? There haven't, I haven't been liaising very much to tell you the truth. I was, you know, before town meeting, I was liaising a lot with the FinCom, but I don't even remember who yeah. I was supposed to be a liaison, liaison anymore. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I'm liaison or not, but the uh, back to school committee has been meeting. Uh, they've been alternating between the full back to school committee and work and working groups. There are four working groups of that committee meeting on alternate weeks. Uh, and as of yesterday, day before yesterday, whenever it was, Monday, uh, Monday, uh, they were waiting for guidance from the governor or the uh, commissioner of education uh, to know where they're standing. The, apparently the governor uh, had a conference today, but he didn't mention any of that. So I think that, that mm. they were expecting something from him today and it didn't come. So they're kind of waiting to uh, see what, what he's recommending. There's talk of changing the uh, number of students allowed in a class, the distancing requirements, a whole bunch of stuff. And until that gets, until we get a little more guidance on that, uh, we're, the, the resources committee is, the resources subcommittee is moving forward, but the curriculum committee and the, uh, the, the ones that are actually have to do with the students are going are waiting and they're probably gonna be meeting in the first week in July or so to begin to make those plans. So that's where they stand. But lots of activity going on, getting ready for the return to school. And of course, the uh, special the, the summer program is going forward, and that is going to be an in-person program. Yeah. So. Which is a really good thing. I'm glad they're able to do that. Yep. Yeah. OK. So um, if there are no other reports, I think, it's uh, 831. We're an hour ahead of uh, schedule, guys. Um, we could adjourn if you want to. I move we adjourn. <laughs> Second, yeah. <laughs> no, let's stick around. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, all the best to you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, hey, it's we'll, been a pleasure. We'll miss you. Serving. It's been a pleasure serving with you all. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I've thank you. I've enjoyed it too. All right, we'll be in touch. All right, take care. Yeah. Yeah.